Hi, we'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Financial Considerations During a Pandemic. We know that a lot of people have questions about what they should be doing with their finances, their investments, um, you know, the stock market falling. There's a lot of questions that come up. So we have some experts here today to give you a little bit of guidance as you make those decisions. Um, just so you guys know, this is put together today by Premier Lifestyle Services, which is in the division of Smolin. For your panelists today, we have the moderator, Henry Rinder. Henry is a licensed certified public accountant in New Jersey and New York with more than 30 years of public accounting experience. He services clients in the construction, distribution, manufacturing, and legal services industries. Henry is a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, the New Jersey Cer Society of Certified Public Accountants, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, and is also a diplomat of the American Board of Forensic Accountants. We also have Ted Beyer. Ted is a licensed certified public accountant in New Jersey with over 30 years of experience in public accounting and tax. He counsels high net worth individuals on wealth management and entrepreneurial issues and also directs our Premier Lifestyle Services um, company that provides accounting, tax, and concierge services such as household payroll, cash management, and bill payment. Ted has also been recognized as the top CPA of the year by the International Association of Top Pro Professionals in 2018 for his outstanding leadership and commitment to the industry. And we also have with us today Jim Donardo. Jim is a wealth management advisor with Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Company and a member of Pioneer Financial. He is an insurance agent with Northwestern Mutual and a registered representative of Northwestern Mutual Investment Services, maintaining securities, Series 7, 63, and 66 registrations, and his life accident and health insurance license. Just a little bit of housekeeping today. Um, since we're using GoToWebinar, this might be new for some of you. So for the audio mode, you can listen today in telephone, or you can call in, um, or you can listen with your computer speakers. Um, to minimize the panel, you just click that little button on the left-hand side. We know that we're going to be covering a lot today in 30 minutes, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. There's a questions feature. You can go ahead and ask your questions in there. We're going to have a couple minutes for Q&A at the end, and if we don't get to those questions, we'll make sure that someone gets back to you with an answer after the webinar. So we're going to go ahead today and get started. I'm going to pass things on to Henry. Thank you, Amanda. This was uh, a very uh, nice introduction. Uh, good job. Um, I know we're facing uh, this uh, pandemic, and uh, it's a sad time for a lot of people, uh, a lot of families, uh, and uh, our thoughts are with, with those families and, and the medical providers who are uh, on the front line of the first response. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a concerning, uh, concerning situation for all of us. And uh, we all try to do our share of help uh, in whatever um, profession and uh, skills we have. So today, I'm, I'm really privileged to uh, be on a panel with my partner, Ted, and our affiliated member of the panel, Jim DiNardo, who, uh, uh, who are just an ex exceptional professionals, both of them. Uh, Ted uh, runs uh, our concierge service type of operation. Uh, for a lot of uh, high net worth clients and celebrities. Uh, Jim, uh, as I, I remember being described as, as you know, the go-to guy for the hedge fund managers, money money managers, and so on. So we, we uh, assembled the panel for you to, uh, to answer the hard questions with skill, knowledge, education, and experience uh, uh, bar none. So perhaps we can go to the first uh, uh, slide and Ted, if you could uh, give us some quick insight on um, overall kind of in, uh, input from clients as to what they see uh, today's financial situation and investment uh, uh, concerns and opportunities, uh, I'll turn over to you, Ted. Uh, thank you, Henry. Um, investing by its very nature a lot of times is very emotional and um, We've been on the uh, optimism to euphoria side of the graph uh, for quite a while. Um, certainly the last few years, we've seen uh, the stock market hit new highs almost on a regular basis. Everything's been great. Uh, my little adage is, you know, throw a daughter at the Wall Street Journal, buy that stock, and chances are you'll make money. But not so much the past uh, month or so. Um, the angle that you see in this graph, um, it's actually much more uh, acute right now. Uh, we've gone from euphoria down to desperation and panic um, really very, very quickly. And um, what uh, I hear from my clients and uh, financial advisors is that um, part of our job has to be to counsel that emotional investor. Because what happens when you're emotional, you inevitably 
uh, buy high and sell low. Uh, you get nervous during that panic stage. You feel that the market's going to keep going down, down, down. You need to sell. Obviously, you're selling at the low point. And then once everything is back together again and we're all out socializing and having parties, you hear all kinds of stock tips, and obviously uh, you're buying at the high side of the market. Um, so part of our job, uh, I'm sure Jim will tell you that it's his job too, is, is to counsel our clients. This will get. This will pass. The markets will come back. Um, if anything, we're in, we have a great buying opportunity right now. Um, so we try to take the emotion out of it and look at it as business people and uh, professionals. Uh, Jim, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah. Con yeah. Absolutely. Um, control the controllables when you're in the the, the right hand slide, the right hand portion of this slide. Control the controllables, right? So the, the biggest thing that we're telling clients that is a controllable during this time is update, review, update and review the financial plan. Yes, the financial plan is less uh, well, is, is not as funded as well as it was um, January 1st of this year because the asset base is, or asset base is down. But during the time of anxiety, uh, concern, um, review the financial plan. I, we, we say that all the time before we get into, hey, what, are, what do you think about this market? I, I want to bring back, what do you think about your financial plan? What variables have changed? Are you thinking of working less because uh, of what's going on? We have had those clients say, hey, I'm 60. I thought about going to 65 and I think I'm going to pass. Let's, let, me, let me know what we can expect from the asset base and the financial plan at 60. Conversely, the other thing happens. Clients have said, I think I'm going to work a little bit longer. I want, I want to get through the next bull cycle. I've gone through three bear cycles now, or four bear cycles if you started, you know, 87 before. Uh, I want to live through one more. I've seen what happens in these bear markets if I just sit tight and we uh, eventually move this slide from the right-hand slide back over to optimism, excitement, thrill, and euphoria. Amanda, next slide, please. So, Jim, you, you're right on point because I wanted to, you know, I've been listening to you, and I give you full credit for this. I've been listening to you for, for several years now, and I, I have, based on your input, I have diversified my portfolio, and I'll be honest, I have not looked at the value of my portfolio in, in, in the current circumstances. I don't even want to look because I know I'm well diversified, and I know mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold and wait it mm -hmm. out. And, and the positions I have, they're going to come back. So having said that, and giving you the credit for it, can you please explain this, this, uh, this graph that uh, we just displayed? Sure. So, so this graph looks at the, uh, the S&P 500 and where the S&P 500 finishes at the end of the year, and as well as where the S&P 500, what was the largest drawdown intra-year? So one is finishing the year, one is intra-year, okay? So um, if, you, if you take a look at 2008, um, the worst time that the S&P, the, the worst mark in 2008 was down 49%, but it finished the year down 39%. Um, last year, during the euphoria of 2019, S&P finished 29, up 29%, but there was a time that we were down seven for the year. And what this says is that there have been an average, an average, an average of an intra-year down 13%, yet the S&P has finished in an annual with, with positive returns 30 out of the 40 years. And what that's saying is that we have to be willing to um, handle, bear, uh, tolerate the, the intra-year drawdowns to have uh, uh, the, the positive returns. And, and, and again, I go back to, you'll hear me say this a lot in this phone call, the intra-year drawdowns, uh, when they look painful, and, and 2018, we had an intra-year drawdown, 2018, not that far away, away, of down 20%. We ended the year down 6%. Most of us don't remember the pain of that because the, the pain of that came during the holiday season uh, at the end of December. Um, but, but during these intra-year drawdowns, try not to look, 
let diversification win and pay attention to the financial plan. There's a slide in here that I'll get into that more. Uh, next slide, please. So, Ted, can uh, I, yeah, go ahead, please. Can, can I take can I take this one, Ted? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Of course, of course. So, so I, I, again, um, we we don't think that um, advisors or clients can market time, and we're telling you that right off the bat. So if you can't market time, there are two slides in here that I want to talk about here. This slide says, and this includes the ugly month of, of March of 2020. It goes back 20 years. Uh, and, it, and all the way to the far left, if you just stayed invested, if you just stayed invested, your total return uh, was 4.5%. And again, this is, again, using the S&P 500. The actual return's a little higher if you use a diversified portfolio. We'll get into that in a sec. If you miss the 10 best trading days, which the 10 best trading days typically come very close to the 10 worst trading days. So you've got to, and, and especially in the month of March, we, where we've had a down, uh, you know, double digit single day and, and an up double digit single day within a five day time period. Uh, if you miss the 10 best trading days uh, to, the, to the second bar on the left, your return goes from 4.5% to 0.66. You just got to stay invested. This is the saying, it matters more that it is time in the market versus timing the market. Uh, and, and, then, and that's the lesson I got from you, uh, Jim. And I, uh, you know, I, hope, I hope that, uh, obviously, I, I believe it wholeheartedly that that's the way, that that's the way you, should, you should do it. And that's the way we should uh, play the market exactly the way you're describing. Fully invested, stay in. But let's go to the next slide. Uh, maybe we should. So, so considering all this, Ted, what are your thoughts on what should uh, clients do? I I fully agree with uh, what Jim just said. Uh, stay fully invested. I have had hours of conversations with many clients who want to go get into cash, want to get into cash, and I'm like, fine, you better get into cash. How are you going to know when to put it back in the market when it's already rebounded? Um, and what day are you going to put it in the cash? You know, on the on the worst day, you know, when we're down, uh, you know, ten, twelve percent in a day, um, you just got to stay in there. Um, it's a marathon; it's not a sprint. Um, investment investing is a long term uh, goal and project. Um, you and uh, you just have to stay invested, and you have to follow the financial plan, as Jim says. And you also have to look for opportunities. With the market down this low, there are tons of opportunities out there. Uh, so just uh, just ride, ride it out. Good point. Anything to add, Jim? Uh, this, uh, it's already been said. Ted said it already, a, a, a statement we're saying a lot with clients. This will pass. The, the, the reason why this is so concerning right now, uh, I, I, I read somewhere, uh, give me – bad news give me bad news over uncertainty any day of the week i wasn't smart enough to come up with that unfortunately i wish i was but give me bad news versus uncertainty and right now we have uncertainty so um but here's a little bit of the difference in in how people are responding to this uncertainty if, if you actually flip if we can go to uh no the, the two trillion dollar package slide Amanda, can gonna, you go a few slides? There you go. That's that's perfect. That's, per perfect. So so this recession that we're in, and we're in one. Th this recession, uh, um, uh, th there is a similar playbook to all recessions. Uh, our playbook is follow the financial plan. Our playbook is stay diversified. Our playbook is have a rebalancing strategy. Have a rebalancing strategy. And, and as long as the market doesn't go to zero, which we, we don't think COVID-19 is going to take the market to zero, then, then, then this will rebound. Th this slide is, is here to, to explain. So that's a similar playbook on all recessions. The 2000, the 2008, 1987, all recessions work the same way. Have a financial plan, practice diversification, and have a strategy to rebalance. And rebalance essentially means buy when things sell off. What's different about this recession that we're in, 
is that we've had a $2.4 trillion package put out there already to stimulate the economy, a relief package. And and in, how is that different than 08? 08, uh, the powers that be, they were they were late. Once they got some stimulus to the table through TARP and the other bills, they did a wonderful, wonderful job. But they, they were late. Uh, in, in a perfect world, staying, not, staying apolitical, in a perfect world, you don't really want Bear Stearns or Lehman Brothers to go under. So, so this time around, the powers that be have put $2.4 trillion out there ahead of COVID-19 going away. And the reason I bring this up is once COVID-19 goes away, springtime, fall, we have a vaccine, I, I got to stay optimistic on all of those things. I've been stuck in my basement for four weeks, so I have to stay optimistic about those, that COVID-19 is going to let me out again. Once that goes away, the, the only difference to this uh, uh, recession is that there is a relief package that should push this economy up. So the worst thing that you could do, in our opinion, with the market is actually get out we, we do believe the recovery is going to be fast. We just don't know when. We don't know if it's going to be V-shaped, U, W. And I'm not, I'm not here to tell you I do know. But once the recovery happens because of how much kind of gasoline has been put out there towards the market, it, it's going to happen pretty fast. So I just encourage people to stay invested. And that is a major difference between this recession and, and the 2008 recession. Let's go back a few slides uh, to the uh, behavioral biases. Uh, there you go. So uh, I think I would like you to address this because obviously we, we are we all saying the same thing. We are saying that uh, people should follow their original strategy and, and not deviate from it and, and don't panic. Basically, that's uh, that's what I'm hearing from both of you. And on top of it, uh, the good news is, and if there is a good news, is that there's $2.4 trillion that's going to flood on the fiscal policy side, the market. And this is in addition, you haven't even mentioned the monetary policies that are favorable as well at the same time. Correct. The interest rate cuts and the uh, purchases that the Treasury is uh, making uh, and Federal Reserve uh, improving its balance sheet, improving uh, American balance sheet and, and taking on paper on the on the uh, Federal Reserve side. So anyway, Ted, can you address uh, perhaps, you know, people that take the wrong direction? Because I'm sure you see some of that. You've mentioned it already and uh, yeah. and uh, address that a bit. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, as the slide shows, um, there's three times as much pain from a loss as there is from a pleasure from a gain. So human nature, and again, we're talking about, you know, emotion, is to shield yourself from pain. So if the market's going down and I have three times as much pain on the downside as I did pleasure from the upside, it's very easy for me to eliminate that pain. I get into cash. I sell everything and go into cash. I put it into the bank. If I'm lucky, I earn a percent on it. Um, and then someday when the market is good again, I'll take the cash out. I'll put it back into the market. I will have missed, as the slide that Jim showed earlier, you know, the 10 or 20 best days. Um, but, you know, I'll ride it up a little bit and I'll get some, you know, minor pleasure. Um, you know, as I, as I said, and it does bear repeating, you know, that the part of uh, what Jim and I do is uh, is coaching and almost playing a psychiatrist in that, you know, we have to talk our clients through this pain and, and try to uh, tell them that it's just a temporary pain. So the doctor used to say when you were little and gave you a shot, it only hurts for a second. The pleasure will be back. Just be patient. Uh, Jim, could you add to it? I, I could, but I don't think I would do it any justice. I think Ted Ted hammered that slide really well. So, so let's go on to the next slide and talk about diversification, um, finance professional versus client perception. I, I, I like this one a lot. So, Ted, I'm going to jump in here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Ted, it's the other way. It's the other way. Go the other way, please. Thank you. Uh, yep. Yes, that's there you go. Thank you. 
So the, the reason I like this slide is that I, I, I've lived this slide. I, I absolutely have lived this slide. So uh, um, 2000 to 2002, um, S&P 500, is, the total return is down 37%, and that was led by technology. And we'll talk a little bit about what we think is going to lead this market back as well. But that's the internet bust, the internet bubble um, uh, with an exclamation point of, of, of 9-11. Um, and, and by the way, again, that uncertainty comment I made before, 9-11, we didn't know if we were going to be in a permanent being attacked mode, uh, terrorist mode. That's why that was the scariest time at that time, because there was so much uncertainty. Um, but the S&P 500 is down 37% during that time period, and a diversified portfolio down 14%. And as this slide says, the client said, hey, you were, you were down less than the S&P 500, but you, we still lost money and the client's not happy. Lo and behold, by the way, 2000, the, 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 the internet bubble, the day that the triple Qs, fun little factoid, the day that the NASDAQ index hit its high was also the day that Berkshire Hathaway hit its low, same exact day. Talk about diversification. If we had half in Berkshire Hathaway and half in NASDAQ when they reversed, NASDAQ comes down, Berkshire Hathaway goes up, value versus growth at work. Diversification worked, but the client wasn't all that happy because we were still down 14%. 2003 to 07, S&P 500 is up 82%. Diversified portfolio is up 57%. And you're saying, okay, uh, you, you know, we haven't done as well as the S&P 500 and you're not that happy. Um, uh, and if you can believe this, I have a child crying here give me 30 seconds uh, not, not a not a concern we we all understand that we are the you know working the stay at home environment uh and we, you know we are sheltered and these things do happen so uh, uh while jim is uh, uh uh dealing with his child uh, situation perhaps uh, uh uh ted if we can go back a few uh slides there was a slide that we uh, passed. It was a slide that had uh, a caption called, you know, talking about think long term, building well takes time. Maybe perhaps you can address that. Yeah. Sure. Um, again, as, as I said uh, early on, I think that um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, the stock market, investing as a whole, it's a roller coaster. And if, and if you picture, you know, a roller coaster, you start out, you go up, 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 very high. And then the dips are, you know, little dips to keep the momentum going. Because once you get to that peak, the motor's off and you're just coasting along. Um, so if, I mean, you can see from this slide that if you have a, a one-year time frame, and this is going from 1951 to the end of 2019, um, any one year that you looked at, it was up 74% uh, of the time, and it was down 26% of the time. And as you continue on, at five years, it's 82 versus 18. At 10 years, 91 versus 9. But at 20 years, any 20-year period from 1951 to 2019, you made money 100% of the time. So that's why, I mean, I certainly tell my children and my younger clients and my older clients who have children and grandchildren, Start young, be disciplined, and you will, over the long horizon, come out ahead. You know, I, I only wish I could tell my 20-year-old self to have done that, you know, 40 years ago. Um, but, but certainly, you know, it makes sense. It, don't invest for the short period of time. Don't make irrational decisions based on temporary blips. One of the things I hear a lot, we've never had anything like this before. Well, look at all the things that we've never had before. Yeah, great. We've never, World War, yeah, we've never had World Wars before. We've never had 9-11 before. I mean, we could think of on and on through history, all those things we never had before. Yet any 20-year period, we made money. This will be no good different. Point. Yeah, good point. Uh, Jim, I think I heard you come back. Are you on? 
I'm I'm back. Yeah, sorry about that. But if we oh, can finish worry. up that no, one, that that, that yeah, last we'll, slide. We'll go, we'll go back to that slide. Amanda, can you go back to the diversification Thank slide? Thank you. Yeah. So 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 I was in the 0307 where where we've underperformed the S&P. Then 08 down 37, diversified portfolio down 21, and we come back to hey, you still lost money. And then finally 09 to 2019, S&P up 351%. So so think about that. If you if you stayed invested during the worst financial crisis up until now, you, if you just stayed invested, you were up 351% diversified portfolio because it has fixed income and other asset classes only, only, only up 200%. And then lo and behold, then you look at this diversified portfolio at the bottom and it takes 20 years to get a smile from a client sometimes. You're, you're up 197% in the S&P, and uh, yet you're up 206 in the diversified portfolio. And, and what the slide doesn't capture is that the diversified portfolio takes about 20% less risk than the S&P 500. So, uh, again, the, the, the three tenets, the financial plan, diversification, and rebalance are key. Excellent, excellent point. And it actually underlines what uh, Ted was discussing uh, before you jump back on, which is that investing is a long-term proposition, and we we all should be looking at it from that perspective. It's not investing is not uh, speculative trades on day-to-day right. basis. Uh, can we go to the one, next slide? One re- real quick, one last thing that I just want to hammer home before we we wrap up: um, the investing and the portfolio is a tool to fuel the financial plan. So we've got to separate those two. The financial plan is, is, is what you should be paying attention to. Investing is literally a tool because we can't sit in 1% taxable money markets for the rest of our lives. So I, I just want to hammer that one, one point home. Good point. And th- frankly, the next slide would give you that opportunity as well. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, there you go. So uh, which one of you gentlemen would like to take this slide? I'll be happy to at least get started. Um, basically, what this is saying is that the average investor is underperforming, just putting money into an S and P 500 index fund, a bond index fund, something along those lines. Um, again, it, it's, it's based on discipline, not emotion, long-term thinking, staying fully invested. Um, and this slide really hammers it home. I mean, if you look over this uh, 20-year period from 99 to 18, um, there's a significant difference between what would have happened if you just kept it fully invested in an index fund versus what the average investor is doing. What this doesn't really show, but but Jim did show it um, the slide before this, is that um, you know during the same period of time, a diversified portfolio even did better. Excellent point. And Jim, if you can uh, bring it home on the last slide, uh, the S&P 500 performance of the macro and epidemic events. Yeah, I mean, th- this talks about um, all of the events that we've gone through that have been, that have had a tremendous amount, I'll, I'll keep using the word uncertainty, has had a tremendous amount of uncertainty, and we just didn't understand what the end looked like. Um I got to be honest, I wasn't around during the Kennedy assassination, so I don't even understand how uncertain that was. Um, but you, you can look at the, uh, the the five or six below, and then there's also the epidemics. So, uh, again, this time is, is different. It's unique. It's because of the, um, the tremendous amount of uncertainty. Um, but at the same time, I, I think in two, three, four years, we're going to be looking at this and you're say, saying, remember when we all spent that month of March and April uh, locked up in our basement uh, where your four-year-old came to the door crying uh, when you were on a conference call? Uh, and we'll be laughing about it. I definitely, those days are coming. I, I, uh, I am certain of that. And Amanda, do we have any questions from the audience before we wrap up? We are getting close to our uh, time. Uh, Amanda? Yeah, so we, we did have a bunch of questions. I'll just ask one. I, I don't know how common of a question this is, but I think it'd be helpful to have some insight into. Um, so people were wondering if it would actually be better to take their cash out of the bank and then 
put it that into investment funds or gold or shares, which is a little bit of the opposite of what you guys were talking about. But I think there's some concerns about the value of the dollar and if that might be a better direction. Yeah, Ted, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on this one if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, uh, this, isn't, this isn't that. This, this isn't a financial crisis. Okay, so we, we, we recommend that clients have some emergency cash in their house. We also recommend that they have emergency cash in a bank, in a bank. But I've had one client ask, should I take, you know, $800,000 out and, and put it in my house? And I was like, that is much riskier than a bank defaulting. 08 was a financial crisis. Banks were in trouble. That's why there was a run on the bank. This is not that. So I would just identify what this is as opposed to using the last recession's uh, entire playbook. Ted? Perfect. Yeah, um, I agree. It, 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 I think a decision like that is a, is a, is a rash decision. Um, and I don't believe in that. Again, you've got to have a financial plan. You've got to follow the plan taking money out of the bank because you're worried about the value of the dollar and putting it into the market or gold or cash. Um, again, it's an emotional decision. It's not a rational decision. You've got to have a plan. Agreed, agreed. And frankly, uh, if people feel uh, comfort in diversification and they want to have a little bit of gold at home or the, on deposits or whatever, that should have been a strategy from the beginning and not a response not a panic response. Amanda, we'll take one more question, and that's, that's going to close the uh, uh, webinar. Yeah, sure. So one of the questions that someone had was that they do invest monthly. They have money that they take, and they invest monthly in the stock market. Um, and I guess it's a little similar to the retirement concept. But is that something that you still recommend that they do, or should they stop making those payments, you know, until this kind of settles down a little bit? I love dollar cost averaging. I think that's a great idea. That will allow them to uh, participate and buy more when the market is low, like it is now. Um, I, I love dollar cost averaging. I mean, that's the whole thought behind 401ks, where you have a little bit of money taken out of your paycheck every couple of weeks, and it goes in and it buys, and, and it's averaged over all the time. So, yes, there's some times that the market's higher, sometimes when you buy less, market's lower when you buy more. Wonderful idea. Stay doing it, please. Have, Stay doing it, please. I know we have a bunch of questions still unanswered, and the time is up. Uh, so what we will do is we'll distribute the questions to the speakers, and we'll try to get back uh, to the listeners and viewers uh, with answers to your question um, in, a short, in a short order. Uh, first of all, we, we appreciate your attendance today. And I wanted to thank Ted and, uh, and um, Jim uh, for uh, doing a terrific job, and also Amanda and Jamie from our marketing team who uh, put, it, put this all together for us. They, they do a fantastic uh, uh, job with that. And uh, thank you again. Be safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.